with Nandi. And today, once again, I have come up with the second chapter of Flamingo textbook. Uh, the name of the chapter is Lost Spring. And today I will be taking up the second part of uh, the second story rather of the chapter The Lost Spring, Stories of Stolen Childhood. And the second part is uh, named as I want to drive a car and if you have not seen or if you have not gone through the first video of the same chapter the lost print by Anis Jung then you can press the I button just coming above my head right so let us begin with the, the chapter uh, the second story that is I want to drive a motor car so uh, in this the second story is also about a small child his name is Mukesh and he he belongs to a marginalized family as we as I told you that in the first part I've discussed about Sahib his full name was Sahib -e Alam and he also belonged to a very 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 poor family of rag pickers who had come from Bangladesh so now today we are going to deal with another child his name is Mukesh okay and he is also belonging to a very poor family they they belong to a marginalized strata of the society and uh, here this boy says and you can see on the screen children it is written Mukesh insists on being his own master I will be a motor mechanic he announces now here the the writer has beautifully talked about the dream of that child the dream of that boy who is working as a bangle maker in an industry in a factory where the bangles are made in Ferozabad. now this boy he is dreaming of something new something different than what their parents had been doing okay now the 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 writer is saying that this boy mukesh he is dreaming of becoming a motor mechanic he is dreaming something different he is dreaming something new that's why this child is unique among all the people who are present there in their locality now slowly if you see the when the uh, the uh, the writer she asks uh, mukesh that how are you uh, going to learn all this do you don't have any idea do you have any idea of how to drive a car do you have any idea uh, about the various parts that are there in the car then very smartly the boy answers that i will learn that shows that this child has got a, a dream in him and he is bent upon uh, doing something or the other so that he can one day turn out to be a motor mechanic. He doesn't want to live in that pathetic condition. But at the same time, the, the writer says that his dreams loom like a mirage amidst the dust of the streets that fill his own town, Firozabad, famous for its bangles. Now, the writer is actually trying to say that his dream is like a mirage. Mirage means an illusion. Like if you go to um, any desert, if you would have been to any desert or you can say in our own country like Rajasthan, it's a, it's a Thar desert there. If you go there, what do you see? You see that there is... A, there is uh, water everywhere you, you feel that there is water there in the where, where there is sand spread all around a vast expanse of sand and in and you are very tired you are feeling the the heat and then you feel that that yes there is water over there but the moment you uh, take a few steps ahead you find that there is nothing over there so this is called mirage this is called illusion okay and uh, about this only the, uh, the writer is talking the writer is saying that this dreaming of this boy Mukesh who is actually involved in making bangles from the past so many years of his life he is dreaming that he wants to become a motor mechanic and this dream of his of becoming a motor mechanic is a mirage why because she feels that they are uh, there are so many people who are involved in uh, bangle making of their locality moreover their parents their great grandparents they were all involved in making bangles no one had ever thought of doing anything any other thing rather than making bangles so how come this boy is dreaming of a something very new and a very different thing therefore his dream is called a 
mirage because the people over there they are taken over there are many people they are like middlemen they are like sahukars they are like politicians they are policemen who are have all entrapped the lives of these people these people's life is entrapped by these all these influential people so that's why they they cannot even dream of doing anything else other than making bangles so how come this boy is dreaming of uh, uh, becoming a motor mechanic rather than being a bangle maker so this that's why the writer says that this boy becoming a motor mechanic is actually a kind of a mirage this is quite illusionistic thing okay which he this boy is thinking of now we come now here the writer has talked about mukesh family now uh, mukesh family includes his father and he has a elder brother and his elder brother's wife is there who stays at home makes uh, does the household and makes food and all for the family mukesh lives in a poor shack shack means a poor hut meant a very small cramped holes rather you can say they are living in very very poor uh, houses over there and now the the writer is also uh, say talking of the kind of the plight of the people in the bangal making industry we all must be knowing every now and then uh, there are there are many talks on all this that children should not be involved in in any kind of hazardous jobs and all but still it happens in the in the factories of ferozabad in many other areas you will find that the children are involved in uh, doing different kind of things and now as far as the bangle making factory is concerned though there are big glass furnaces as you can see on the screen it is written that uh, there are big glass furnaces which have got very very high temperature and because of the high temperature and the cells the factories which are there they are very small they are dingy cells means very dark and dirty and in those dark and dirty cells when there will be very high temperature then what will happen the children uh, might uh, lose their eyes the children might become unhealthy unwell okay and although they are malnutrition because they are very very poor these people they can't afford to go to a doctor to consult a doctor so there are so many things which have entrapped these people and they are bent upon doing this thing one more thing here the writer that is telling is that these people they are illiterate and because of because they are illiterate that's why they don't know that sending their children who are no who are less than 14 years of age is a crime they don't know that this is what the writer is talked about and now we come to the family of mukesh as i have already told you that mukesh elder brother is there in the house and he has a they have a bahu bahu means a daughter in law elder brother's uh, uh, wife and she is also not very aged okay she is also a very young girl who has got married because in their community the people they get married at a very early age okay this is what they have talked of here and uh, now again they are they saying that the father of mukesh mukesh father was earlier a tailor okay but then he could not uh, he could not work well or he could not vibe well in that profession so he ultimately took to his father's profession means the profession of uh, mukesh grandfather that was of making the bangles so now there is mukesh grandmother also in the house the one of the oldest lady of the house is the grandmother and now what does the grandmother say now grandmother says that uh, even her husband was also working as a bangle maker but now she she there is a Uh, you can see on the screen that uh, with an inverted comma it is written it is his karm his destiny says mukesh grandmother who has watched her own husband go blind now she is telling that her husband the grandmother is saying that my husband has gone had gone blind and she saw her husband becoming blind okay he uh, he was very miserable the condition of the husband was very miserable and now she is not blaming the condition or the ambience of that factory which was responsible because the the dust particles they used to 
they were suspended in the air and then they would go into his eye and that's why he had gone blind so instead of blaming the ambience the condition the working environment now she is blaming the karm now she is saying that it is my husband's destiny it was destined that he would go blind that's why he has gone blind okay so this shows that these people because of their illiteracy this is what these people are thinking of this is what their thinking is now uh, again the writer is talking of various uh, kinds of uh, spirals of bangles they the, he has given beautiful colors to them like sunny gold paddy green royal blue pink purple all different colors of the rainbow and the people they they take um, it, it, on a hand cart there is a four wheeled hand cart they they heap the beautiful looking bangles and they move from one lane to another selling the bangles okay and now again here the very important uh, thing that the uh, writer is talking the writer is talking about a girl her name is savita as you can see on the screen and uh, and she is also helping one of an elderly woman she is working with one of the elderly women in a factory in a bangle factory and she is doing that soldering thing okay it means joining joining the pieces of the glass okay and her and she was so much expert in doing that because she had been doing it from since her childhood very very when she was very young she had been doing that and now she has become so expert that she is able to do it as if her hands were moving as if like a machine she she had become so mechanical and now again the writer says that i wonder if she knows the sanctity of the bangles she helps make now the writer is saying that i really uh, pity that girl that uh, if whether that girl knows what is the importance of the bangles in the life of a married woman in in our country in according to the customs according to the traditions the hindu law the hindu traditions uh, these bangles they are considered to be very auspicious a married woman must uh, wear these glass bangles this shows the act Uh, this shows this is a kind of a uh, what you say uh, symbol of being a married woman so now she is the, the writer is saying that is this is it so that the girl is knowing about all, all these things because one day after a few years maybe after one or two years definitely this girl is also going to get married and then she will realize that what the things that she was making was actually so very auspicious yeah, and it it holds a very important place in the lives of all the women the women community and she was making that same thing without knowing what is the importance of that particular thing in the same way as that elderly woman who was sitting with her she was wearing those bangles in her hand and she was doing that bangle making thing and the same way was savita doing but the difference was the old lady knew the importance of bangles but savita was being a being such a small child she was not knowing this shows that children who are so innocent who don't know anything about their traditions their customs they are made to do something work under such pathetic poor condition so that their family can survive their family can have a square meal at night when they go back home so this is the plight of the people which is depicted very beautifully by the writer okay now that elderly woman who is there sitting with savita that small girl and they are making both of them are making bangles and uh, this the writer and is young she happened to ask her okay uh, uh, she she asked her a question and see uh, Uh, how this lady answers she says she says that in hindi she says ek waqt se bhar khana bhi nahi khaya she says in a voice drained of joy now drained of joy means there is no happiness in the life of these people from morning till night they are toiling hard so that they can get a square meal to eat and she has never she says that i have never ever since the time i am born and i am brought up and i am doing this work and i have turned uh, so old and still i can tell you and i am i'm sure that i have never ever had a square a full meal 
in my lifetime see how poor these people were and now she's taking telling about her husband she said that her husband is also a very very old man okay and now see what her husband says he says uh, he says i know nothing except bangles all i have done is make a house for the family to live in now the the man says that uh, in my whole lifetime i have been working day and night i have been toiling hard so much so that i can uh, give proper facilities to my family but then i have failed he said that i could only make a small hutment for my family this is what i could do the whole of my life but again the poet the writer is uh, happy the writer said that okay fine it's good that you have at least made a house for yourself think of the others who could not even make a proper hutment a proper house for themselves they're living in poor shacks they're living in slums okay they are leading very very poor life at least you have a roof over your head she really admires okay now again the the writer is talking the writer then asks them that why don't you people organize yourselves into a cooperative okay why don't you join hands together everybody every one of you why don't you are so young people there are many young people in the locality who are working in the bangle factories why don't you people join hands together Uh, in order to form a cooperative of your own and start working on your at your own end but see what the people say they say that even if we try and organize ourselves we are so very poor we do not have the hand or the backing of any of the influential people like any sahukar like any middleman like any kind of a politician any politician or you can say the police even if we will try and uh, have our own cooperative the people the policemen they all will come and then what will they do they will they will beat us by saying and they will put us into the jail by saying that whatever we are doing is something very illegal although these sahukars these middlemen they are doing things illegally but because they have got influence over the policemen over the politicians so no one ever deters to say anything to them because uh, although they have employed people they have employed small children in the factory which is something illegal and very bad on their part they should not do but because they have a good backing from behind because they have good influential people in their pockets in their hands and they keep impressing them they keep on doing something or the other for them in order to impress them so that they do not raise their voice against them so but then the poor people they say that we are not having all these things with us if we will form a cooperative of our own then these people this politician and policeman they'll come and they'll throw us into the jail and we don't have that much of money our parents our family doesn't have that much of money that they can uh, fight for us in the court of law or they can they can uh, bring us out of the jail or, or, or even if we are beaten then we will have to go to we will have to be hospitalized so we don't have that much of money we don't have that much of power that we can invest money into all these things so that's why we have never ever dared to uh, form ourselves into cooperative otherwise we know we can do but we don't have a good backing there is no one who can help us right so uh, so uh, the the writer says that when i listen to these people i could see two distinct world one of the family who are caught in the web of poverty the burden of the poverty so uh, see the the writer is talking about two people as i said that one of the people are those who are poverty stricken who are very very poor who cannot afford uh, food for themselves who cannot afford a roof on their head who are uh, very poor who are downtrodden who are poverty stricken and who don't have any backing who don't know uh people influential people who don't know how to influence people and then there is another group and that group is of the sahukars means the middlemen or the people who are who have employed these small children in their factories or these bangle makers in their factories okay the owners of the factory there are two groups one is of the poor people who are working as laborers bonded laborers on the fa- in the factories and the second is these middlemen these uh, sahukars or these factory owners and the police people and the bureaucrats 
and the keepers of law keepers of law means the police okay they they, they should actually be helpful to these people but then they are not they are not helping instead of helping the poor people who, are, who really need the help of the police who really want to uh, come out of their vicious circle of poverty no but then these police people they also do not help them they help the people who have power who have money who get influence who are influential people so together they all these people means the bureaucrats the the landowners the factory owners the saukars the middlemen they have joined hands together and together they have imposed the bag on the child that he cannot put down this is the baggage and the baggage is of what of poverty the baggage of working oh, under such dingy conditions it's in, in the dark cells under such pathetic conditions poor working conditions they are made to work and who has done this thing who is responsible for this the writer says that it is these rich people the haves the difference between the haves and the have nots will not go because these people whom we say whom we call as haves whom we call as rich they have imposed upon these people the baggage of poverty the baggage of responsibility is being imposed upon them since their childhood days and the childhood days which 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 are supposed to be uh, days of freaking out days of fun days of enthusiasm days of entertainment the time to learn the time to grasp things okay the time to shape your career the time to learn more and more things the time to explore so this particular time period this beautiful time of their childhood is stolen away is taken away from by these people by these middlemen by these police people by these bureaucrats by these uh, you can say the keepers of the law okay by the land owners by the factory owners so here the writer is talking about the two people and at the same time the writer is also knocking at the to the reader the writer is knocking the reader and telling the reader also that when we have the power when we have the authority to do something then we should we should go and uh, confront the thing and we should try and help these people at least something on our part which we can do personally at our own level we should always try to do then only the gap between the haves and have nots can be uh, removed otherwise this gap will never be abridged and when and this gap will keep on increasing day by day and it is we all can see that the gap is increasing day by day but it depends on us the educated masses to create awareness in the minds of the people not only in the minds of the rich but also in the minds of the poor how they have to fight for their rights to tell them what is legal to tell them what their right is to tell them how they what are their fundamental rights to tell them that no do not send your children to uh, for the factories to work rather send your child to a school to study okay so that he or she can get primary education because that is provided free of cost in our country in the government schools so this is what the the writer is actually trying to knock and tell us now we come to the end now in the end again uh, the poet uh, the sorry i'm sorry the writer he is uh, she is talking that when i sense a flash of it in mukesh i'm cheered now the writer says that um, when i look at mukesh and his eyes his eyes are dreaming his eyes are different from that of the other people his eyes are different because they are dreaming of something new something good he doesn't want to live the same kind of life he wants to do something new something different okay he want to trod on a new path he wants to make his new way for himself and that is very good she says that i feel very good when i look at this child and when this child says that i want to be a motor mechanic and again the the that boy mukesh he repeats he insists that no i will be a motor mechanic you see i will go to a garage and i will learn how to repair how to repair a he saying that i will learn how to repair a uh, the motors the cars okay and how i am going to learn although 
that garage is very very far away from my place but you see the zeal okay but you see the intention of that child he is he is very clear in his mind that definitely one day or the other i am going to be a i am going to be a motor mechanic okay so uh, now when uh, the the writer she says that do you also dream of flying a plane and uh, this uh, then then what happens then the uh, this boy mukesh he is quiet he is silent and he says no staring at the ground he looks at the ground he says no i can't why because in his small murmur there is an embarrassment that has not yet turned into regret he is content to dream of cars that he sees hurling down the streets of his town few airplanes fly over ferozabad now he says that this boy is very down to earth and he is not dreaming of flying a plane because he is not seen the planes he has seen only the motor cars okay they are hurling motor cars on the streets he has only seen that he has not seen the planes in all why because less of planes fly over ferozabad so it is the motor cars which this boy has seen this small boy and so the thing that he has seen he is bent upon uh, getting that thing he, he wants to be a motor mechanic because in his locality he doesn't have, he has never ever seen the planes he has only seen the cars so he thinks that i will one day definitely be a motor mechanic and learn also how to drive a car so this was all about uh, this chapter it was a beautiful presentation by anis jang and very beautifully portrayed also uh, and um, so with this we come to the end of uh, 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 this this beautiful chapter the lost spring stories of stolen childhood now why the poet has called of stolen why has the writer written stolen childhood here why stolen childhood because in the first story also we have talked of the rag pickers their childhood is stolen they are not given proper education they are deprived of education they are deprived of good food good health good living conditions and same is the case with mukesh he is also uh, the this is his age to go to school to learn something to learn something new to get educated and but this is the time when he is made to work under such pathetic condition the responsibilities have overburdened these children and their childhood is somewhere lost the the time when they were so the, the toys should be there in the hands of these children they are burdened by the responsibilities they are burdened with earning food for their family okay so that's why the the title of this story is quite justified quite appropriate uh, when the poet writer says that it is lost spring the stories of stolen childhood i hope uh, you all must have understood the summary of this uh, the second part also i want to be a motor mechanic and if you have really understood it and liked it and comprehended the thing then uh, please do not forget uh, to subscribe my channel as i always say and uh, do not forget even to press the like button and um, if you have not seen the the earlier part the first part of it then do not forget to press the uh, i button just coming overhead so that you can get to know the summary of both the chapters and uh, very soon i'll be coming up with the uh, most important question answers of uh, chapter 1 and chapter 2 of fleming book thank you